All right, everybody, away we go. Welcome to today's call. It is Friday, November the 6th of 2020, and this is the TRC sales training call. Always a fun time to be had here. I want to make it clear that since the last time we chatted, um, we've set some new rules up for this call. It's sales training, which means there are several parts in our world to a sale. One is the inside sales piece, also known as telemarketing, also known as new business development, any of those terms would apply to that work where you're making outbound phone calls to try to convert business for an outside sale where we are going face to face with people. We might be showing them a buyer, uh, a buyer, a property for the first time running an open house, doing the listing, whatever it might be. So there were two points to this. So the Friday call is a little bit different from the bi-weekly Thursday call. If you missed the call yesterday and you're an agent, telemarketer, whatever you might be in a team, you need to make sure you talk to your team leader about becoming part, because it's included for them in their program with me, about becoming part of what's called the TRC campfire calls. Those are bi-weekly calls where we go through the buyer plan and the seller plan, which is meant to protect you so that you have a unique selling proposition, the fact that you have a plan. And so we do that bi-weekly. And yesterday was a really good evolution of that call because we were able to take the market update, which gets produced once a month, so that you can all globally answer the question as salespeople, how's the market? And that's globally and generally the most interesting thing to people. And that's the conversation that as salespeople, both on the phone and otherwise, you need to master first. Because if you're going to have conversations that lead to real buyers or sellers doing something with you around your plan, you first need to engage them in a conversation that's relevant to all. And that's the answer to how's the market. Especially those of you who are in the United States right now, we're in the thick of this major election. People are going to be curious as to how the outcome is affecting, has affected, will affect the real estate market. And you'll know that if you sit still once a month with your team leader and your team manager, and there is a very simple market update produced and you come up with the talking points for that month, and then you go to the next month. That's always the opening salvo to any conversation. If you want to sound smart online, uh, on your blog, and then syndicate it out to social, you want to go live on social once a month. It always starts with the answer to how's the market. And if you can't answer that, that's your first problem that you can fix very easily. The second challenge is once that begins, you get into more content specific or context specific, I should say, for the people that you're talking to. And that's where every week when we do a heavy dose of talking about these telemarketing calls, it's why. Because I can coach against that, right? I can coach against that. So, so the point is, meaning if you have a plan and you've trained on that plan like we do in the campfire, and then you go out and you bring me an anecdote on this, I can coach. So I may train on the script again today, even though we do it on campfire. I may talk about the seven points to the seller program, the six points to the buyer, chunking it up, making it simple, teaching you how to empower somebody to make a decision about the general process. And then hopefully, because you're the one that did it in their, in your direction. Okay. But if you don't go out and make that a practical application, you don't bring it on social and try to engage people in the conversation. Okay. You don't bring it to an open house, start talking about the market, find out this context and move into the buyer or seller plan that relates to them. Then you have no anecdote that's coachable. So this always starts with, I will train you on what to say, how to say it, and give you the plans and the systems that are fifth grade simple. Okay. But if you don't practically apply it and come in here and give me some context, we have a problem, right? So that's really the most important thing here to understand is that I want to coach today and weight it that way versus train. Training is for campfire. Some script training is required, sure, but it's being coached against a trained script or a plan, period. Very simple. All right, so what I want to see now, and I am broadcasting everywhere, a little bit more difficult on Zoom today because I'll have to see if I can see the chat because I'm, I'm doing that on the phone and I'm also on StreamYard where... Uh, anybody can post, meaning you're seeing me live out there. Lenny Simonetti, my man. Good to see you, pal. Um, anybody out there in uh, Facebook land on the page, YouTube, um, or in the private groups, you can post comments. It'll all come up here on StreamYard for me. And then I have muted all the mics in Zoom. So if you want to speak and bring me your question, um, then that's
exactly what we're looking for. Okay. So, um, yeah, I'm not doing Alice and I am not doing calls until the second half. This is outside sales first. And I'm, well, I will sit here in dead silence until somebody gives me an anecdote. And so that means Alice and you, Chris, or somebody like that, that's what we need. And, and Autumn, again, I'll just ask that we keep, um, uh, that, um, chat room quiet. Okay. Um, that's what we want to do. We want to keep that chat room quiet, just respond to questions in there. So if you can all uh, post something in there, I will be able to see it. I am seeing the chat now. Chris Kleber, you had something that you sounded like you were warm enough to talk to me about. Oh, hang on one second, buddy. Um, I am not hearing you too well. Let me just see if this is. Hang on, boys. Let me see it. It's either my volume is way down or. All right, go ahead, Chris. Try it now. I've got Jackie Wetzel, brand new agent. Um, I'm still waiting to get ML, MLS access. That's how new she is. Just started this week. Okay. She's on the call here. It doesn't turn her camera on, I see. Um, but I've got Jackie set up to do uh, two open houses this weekend on two really good listings. Um, so I just wanted to introduce her to you and everybody else. And if you want to pay any special attention to that scenario. Yeah. So, so let's go back. Let's go back to it. We're, we're talking about her, a new agent going in and doing an open house, right? Two. Yep. Okay, good. All right. So look, give me a little context. What have you done to set her up for success um, systematically? I mean, what is her expectation of what she's supposed to bring with her? What does that open house look like in her mind's eye? Yeah, so I, I've given Jackie the or Jack, yeah, Jackie um, the infographic, buyer seller infographic magazine. She's already had everything changed over, customized for her by MRG. So she's got that uh, for the open house tomorrow. I've set her up with all of the paperwork, yeah. sign in sheet, uh, listed, you know, active, sold, under contract properties. Um, Trying to think of what the hell else we Okay, so what is it, Chris? What does it physically look like? You don't happen to have a picture that you could show me, do you? Like, do you, does she have, I mean, is she ready for a presentation to a seller or buyer live? That would be the number one way to make her feel confident. She's actually going into the one to many presentation opportunity. We're not saying it'll happen as clearly as booking an appointment with a buyer or a seller that's a one on one, but there's the potential for the one on many. So, my vision for her to be set up for success with that she would have. Let's go through a buyer package first because the likelihood is a buyer walks through the door and she has an opportunity to convert them to buy that house or another one. So my thought would be, let, let me go through it then for you. To be set up for that, she wants to imagine herself as the maitre d' of a restaurant or the hostess of a restaurant, whatever the appropriate language is. Um, she sits herself at a table that's sort of a command post. Somebody comes to the to the door and, hey, thanks so much for coming. Sellers ask that everybody sign in here. And when you're done doing that, there's a free full feature sheet on the property and then you can feel free to go through the house. I think it's very important in that sales context and the one to many um, to, to try to make sure they remember this is a private residence. People are coming through. It is their rules and the seller's rules and everybody plays by those rules, right? So the idea, the idea being is that we want somebody to um, sign in and that sign in sheet has the basics in there whereby we are able to say, all right, look, you know, I can see that you have an agent or not. Right. I can see how you found out about this, what your name is. I can see maybe you've written down your email. But the basic thing that, that really we want on that sheet, do you have an agent? It doesn't ask that. It says your agent's name and they'll either put in one or they'll put in something generic like Zillow or nothing. And so that once that transaction is done at the very first part. And again, I, I can't emphasize enough to all of you agents that are going to do these open houses. You have to remember the purpose is twofold. One is, yes, you have to be of service to that seller, which means the seller would like to know who came through their private residence. So you need to be almost like security and you need to ask these people to sign in and you can't be an apologetic or a shrinking violet. You need to say the seller has asked that everybody signs in. So please do so. 
And when you're done, the exchange of value is there's a full feature sheet of the property with all the pictures and details, and then you can feel free to take a walk through. That's the exchange. For security, you tell me who you are, then we'll give you information and access, period. Finish that. That's of service to your seller so that if we have to go back and talk to these people afterwards on behalf of the seller to get feedback, that's paramount. But the second part is as you glance down, and by the way, a key sales tip here, a mistake that I made many times. In that high I desire I have to converse with somebody in a live way, oftentimes in the past at an open house, I would interrupt somebody while they were writing. And what you'll notice when you do that, it's very difficult for people to talk and write. They cannot walk and chew gum very easily at the same time. So after you've asked them to perform, entering their information, okay, you stop and you let them finish. And when they do, they grab the feature sheet. And if you have a fancier brochure for, for your own marketing purposes of that property and then some for you, you want to package that all up together. I'll take at least bare minimum, like a fancy looking cloud CMA or something that looks good that you give away to them with your contact info. So you're taking the information from the property, your contact info, because you printed it from MLS. So you're set up. Okay. Next is after they finish, the conversation would go, you folks looking for yourselves. So we want to know, do we have a decision maker in front of us? Or are they looking for somebody else? Because oftentimes you'll have um, maybe a younger child, not, not child, but you know, an adult child looking for their parents or vice versa. So it's good to know, am I dealing with the decision maker? Is this somebody who is interested um, in this situation, right? And so I, I think ultimately the idea is, you, you want to make sure that you're dealing with a decision maker because if you're going to try to convert this person with more information and then insight, make it worth your while. Oh, no, no, no. I, I'm not looking. I own a house down the street. Um, I was just curious. Wonderful. No problem. Because being of service to the seller, I know a lot of sellers and agents poo-poo that, but that's how you get the word out. It's sort of like the just listed card. Why would you send that? Because you want the neighbors to know. Maybe they'll send one of their friends directly to you. So when somebody comes in the open house, we're trying to spread the word about what's available. And of course, it might be a nosy neighbor who's thinking about selling themselves. It's a known phenomenon in our business that when one sells, several sell. So there's this echo effect that's beneficial, not just to the seller, but also to you because you're drumming up the market. You're using the product to drum up the market. Now you look down and you say, well, you're looking for yourselves. They say, yes, I was. How's it going? Just curious. You're still of service. You're still a human being here. You're not jumping up and down on them like a you know a new puppy saying, "Whoa, who's working with you?" And say, "Stop, stop." That will come if you magnetize. It will not come if you pursue it. If you pursue it, they will run away and they will make sure they run very far. So you want to try to learn how to magnetize somebody in this situation. So the way that you do that is you just strike up an authentic conversation about their process. This is what we do for a living. We help people through the process of buying or selling a property. So you want to just engage them in that and you want to be of service to them now. So one, we're of service to the seller who we're doing the open house for. Next, we're of service to the, this buyer trying to see if there's any additional guidance they would need beyond the house that's right in front of them. Okay. So now let's presume that they, they, they lean in. And, and they like what you're saying and say, look, I've got some information over here that gives you a little update on how the market's doing right now. We produce this every month. And I've got some other properties. And in the case that this one doesn't work for you, I've taken the liberty to print out about five or six more so that, you know, while you're in your car, you can drive by those, take a look at those. And more importantly, what I like to do to help buyers the most is I've printed out a few that have sold in this neighborhood most recently. We actually use those to price this property. You can see what the money's buying. Now, when you go down that, a market review, other properties of service. Remember those two words, of service, other properties that are available so that while you're out, I've curated, made it easy for you to find them so you don't have to run around on Zillow. Here they are. You can put it into Google and find the addresses and go by yourself. And then lastly, I'm going to start to turn the corner with them. I've also included some properties that have sold so you as the buyer see what the money's buying. That's a huge turn the corner into insightful information. Because your value eventually is to be their insightful guide if you can get the job against the plan that you have also included, which you can then mention. Oh, and by the way, 
I gave you a free copy of the plan I use to help my buyers through the process. So Chris, that's a thorough discussion, not just of what she should have, but how a dialogue would go. I can't believe how many agents go into a house just oblivious as to what to do. And again, it's actually akin to real live lead generation and culling of possibilities. You're prospecting live, essentially, is what you're doing as outside sales agents. You all get caught up in this call and you think telemarketing is the only thing that we talk about. That's absurd. I do what I just expressed. I happen to be away, away from my marketplace, but when I'm in it, I, I'll, Laura will tell you every single weekend. I'm saying, "What should I open house? What needs you know attention? Where are we at with this?" And I will go in there and I will follow this formula to the letter, and I will convert buyers very easily by magnetizing them by giving information that then becomes insightful, that then becomes logical, that they need guidance and they trust me now because I was willing to give away this curated, organized information that they want and then that they need, okay? Chris, questions about that, thoughts? You wanna weigh in on anything? She must be set up with those materials though so that she doesn't think. Yeah, go ahead. I just got a thought, man. Like in our market, we really don't have a, uh, we don't have any inventory, so. What do you, what, what's your thoughts or what's, what do you think would be better, you know, since there's no inventory? Uh, uh, Lee, there's not, it's not either or. If there's, if the inventory, let's say something super hot, okay? Now, I would still print something. Zero is zero. So you don't have zero, but you have very little, right? So the, the, the day of or the day before they're going to go out, just get what you can. And in it, because again, you're going to prove that point informationally and insightfully to the buyer when they come through the door. Look, just to give you a heads up, I put this package together and you're going to see that there's a fistful of in these properties in there that I put together just yesterday, but I'll guarantee you some of them have already gone under agreement. So I definitely also included some stuff that has sold super recently, even within the last two weeks, because the market's hot. So you can see not only what the market's buying, but how quickly it's turning around. So don't convince yourself it's, a, it's an absolute statement. You are right where you are is white hot. And so, and, and you know, Bethesda, Maryland and greater DC area, especially with all the turnover that will happen, you know, right now, you, you, you just still, it's still the same information lay. It's just that the anecdote that goes with it is like, we're in a white hot market. See Lee, one of those things that we, we, have brought up in the outside sales conversation here a lot is what do you do in a tough market when you meet a buyer for the first time, they don't know you. So they certainly don't like you yet and trust you. They haven't had a chance to like you. They definitely don't trust you because you've given them no reason because there's no context. But if you give them the real deal and you educate them right there in that moment and they see, see, and you can point to them, say, look, you see all these solds here? Just give me a heads up. Okay. They're all selling at 102, 103, up to 110% of their asking price. So you need to understand that's the way this market works right now. You have to understand yeah, that. I, I, that's what I was thinking too, is like even maybe have under contract or pending with the days on market just because no one believes. Lee, 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 I'll make it easier. I'll make it easier for you. You don't even have to go into the solds. You simply have to give them the market update. We went through this with the Griffin Realty Group agents just yesterday on our call, where I've said this, that at the beginning of every month, we are going to coach them in that weekly call. And that monthly, that first week is going to be coaching about the, the bullet points on, on what's happening in the marketplace. So that if they're in an open house the very next, you know, two days later, so we have a meeting on Thursday, here's what we discussed. On Cape Cod, the inventory has shrunk incredibly. We've gone from seven to eight, nine months regular, let's say seven to nine months regularly down to two point something. That's an incredible shrinkage in inventory. So people have been saying for years and months that the inventory is shallow when the truth is, it hasn't been until now, but even so that it shrunk, there's still three months worth of inventory on Cape Cod. So it's it's not like it's a, you know, a disaster. So we don't let them run away with their emotional perception. We just show them the very first thing. And I brought that up at the beginning of the call today and I'll repeat it. How's the market, Lee? Well, you know, funny you should ask. I've got my market report in this little package here. And let me just open it up. Let me show you. You see, here's how the market is. 
it's only taking 23 days to sell a house. The sold, meaning the last the sale price to the last asking price, that ratio, you notice that they're selling for 102% on average above the final asking price. Everything's getting bid up on average 2%. So that shows you that the seller's in the catbird seat, presuming that they price it correctly. So those are two indicators that in Bethesda, Maryland, it, it is a seller's market. However, having said that, don't despair. This is where you start to get into your insight. What we do with our buyers in a hot market is, number one, we give them this plan. And as their representative, we tell them the very first most important thing you want to do is get very clear with a mortgage broker as to how much you're, you're, you're going to spend. And if you're going to spend cash, then you want to get with your, your man the manager of your cash account at the bank, get them ready to write a letter that says you have the wherewithal to complete this. Here's why. Once you know what you want to spend, you can look at these solds that I'm giving you and see what that money buys and be contented that that's what you're willing to spend up to that max. Then Somebody like me can take you out. We can tour a few of them. You don't have to buy the first couple because they're probably gone in a couple of weeks and you might not be ready, but we tour a couple. You get in them. Instead of looking at pictures, you see what that money is really about to buy. And then what happens is we do a quick analysis and we find out whether it's you know one of these that's priced light where it should go over asking or it's heavy because somebody's cheating. So Lee, you begin to just tell them based on that information what you're seeing and what's happening is that's the magnetic draw into you where they're saying, my gosh, this guy has really got his stuff together. But instead of just talking at them, we have these implements. One, the market update. See, here's how the market's really doing. It's information. Here's what it means to you, the buyer. I'm giving you my insight. Now, the next thing that you should do is get a copy of this plan that I'm going to give you so that you can see what it is. And of course you can see the solds, but that's how you get one of the solds properly. So it's all information that's being curated, organized and given to them. And that's, what's drawing them in. Does that make sense? Yeah. 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 And again, it's, 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 we do this often as top producers on muscle and it's a terrible thing because imagine coming into a hot open house and you've got a lot of people coming at you. You don't have to try to talk to everybody who's unencumbered, meaning they don't have a buyer agent. You don't have to force yourself to talk to everybody. You have to control the flow of information and say, sign in, sign in. And you always get the knuckle. Oh, I'm just looking. I know you're just looking for security purposes. The sellers ask that you sign in, right? So, yeah. so there you go. That's, I think that's the key. Cool. Yeah. yeah good points though. Uh, Clubba, you good? Hey, Danny, can I ask a question? Yep, hang on. Chris Kleba, can you unmute me? Yep, I'm sorry. I had you unmute, Danny. I'm, yep. I apologize. Yeah. <clears throat> Jackie's driving, but she's done the call this thing in, and she texted me saying thanks for the, <clears throat> thanks for the help. Okay, so. good. So we'll... Yes, Danny, thank you so much. I appreciate it. Uh, Those are great tips. Yeah, Jackie, you're welcome. And you know what I'd like you to do is try your yeah. best to remember the organizational steps maintain that control position in there make sure they sign in because it is you're prospecting so you need to sift and sort who's prospectable you right while you're being of service and i'd love you to try to remember and maybe take some notes immediately when it's over so that next week when you come back your practical application gives us a coachable moment okay okay i'll definitely do that awesome best wishes on it this weekend i'm sure you'll be fine uh paul go ahead Danny, the question is a little bit unrelated to the conversation, but um, I, I hope I can ask it real quick. Um, we were having very robust um, team Friday meetings like you have with your staff. And once COVID happened and we all kind of went home for the last eight months, they've dried up completely. Like I would have no participation so I just kind of stopped having them and told the told people they could have one on one with me if they wanted but what are some ideas you might share to help me get some enthusiasm back yeah. into this? Well 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 look well well look I, I mean 
you know, it always comes back to our leadership first. We are responsible first. And so the value of the meeting was not just the physicality of it. It's the information and the coaching opportunity. And so, so I think that all of you that are on Paul's team or all of you that are in the Griffin Realty Group that might be listening to this as well. I, I mean, one of, one of the ideas is, look, we can train you until the cows come home, meaning constantly, never endingly, and just on and on and on. Okay. Now the issue becomes if you don't take this, like I just said to Jackie and practically apply it in an open house, practically apply it even online. If you don't get online and, and either just post and comment on the, the market update that we produce for you, or even better yet do a video about it and try to get people to DM you or comment on you, you're not practically applying something. So what do you want Paul to do to coach you? You're supposed to be bringing your coachable moments into those meetings. And Paul, I would never stop it. I would never stop the meeting. Like we, we, I mean, I think, I think, what's that? What if I literally have one person showing up like Andy? You know, oh, okay. Well then, then you and Andy go there and then I'd call everybody with, was on my team and say, why aren't you showing up to the meeting? I mean, you must be killing it, <laughs> right? I mean, what, what are you doing here? What's happening here? I mean, at some point in time, all I'm not afraid to call you all out. You're either in the business or you're not, right? I'm talking agents, you know, uh, agents. You're in this or you're not. The fish don't jump into the boat, fry themselves up in the pan for you. It doesn't work like that. You proactively go dive over the side of the boat and you go fishing. It's a proactive business. It's not a reactive one. And if you want to shrink down and use COVID or these other excuses to shrink down, then shame on you. Maybe it's not the business for you. Because you can only you can only expect a team leader, an owner, somebody to meet you at the fifty yard line. We can reach across and maybe even throw an arm, but it, but it, this is a partnership. And so what must happen is you must take the training, practically apply it, bring it back into those team meetings for coachable moments. My team's doing a better job of that. Same thing, they would come in there. I don't like to lecture; it's not my thing, right? Even when we do the masterminds, we can transparently tell them, Paul, it's an interactive thing when we're going through these mind maps and these management plans, which take enormous amount of time. It's interactive, right? So, so I think it's the people that participate. They're the right avatar for Cantu Realty Group. The ones that don't, I, I don't know what they're doing every day. I hope they're not bitching and complaining after it's all over, right? They're not bitching and complaining, but they're not cracking deals either. So it's frustrating. All right. Well, look. I talked to Serena today about an accountability sheet, you know, that, you know, that prospecting sheet, like let's go back to Jackie for an anecdote on outside sales. There's a score sheet that everybody has to keep for themselves. Okay. So for example, as we segue into the, the inside sales or telemarketing calls, um, uh, I was just refining with Serena, the telemarketing sheet. And then with my own team between Autumn and Laura, we were refining Infusionsoft as a tool, making it clear and simple to use. And so that's the score sheet because we're prospecting. We're in the act of prospecting, meaning we need to be proactively going out there and having conversations about how the market's doing, find the people that have a context to buy and sell inside the next 12 months and talk to them about the plan and the properties, how that relates, and then set them up for some longer term follow up so that we open up a lane where we're the only ones serving them. Well, that's the act of prospecting. Right. We, that everything there happens is the act of creating a prospect. A contact is a contact is a contact. There are a dime a dozen. You can buy leads by the gazillions. OK, but you need to have some context to get into a conversation about how the market is to then get into some context to see if they're buying or selling to then see if you can prospect them through words and offers that, that you know, are carried on those words. So, Paul, your job is to say, I'm here. Where are you? Where were you? And pick up the phone individually and reset the company. I understand COVID was a kick in the tail. I understand it stole some momentum. And I understand that from time to time, not everybody makes it. Okay. But I'm looking for when I'm now hiring and I am in a very aggressive hiring mode, I am looking for teachability. That means you will show up and be taught. You will be coached. You will be trained, right? You have to be a willing participant. So you need to call each one of them individually, find out what's going on with them and, and reset their commitment to this body of, of work for themselves, not you. This is not some like ogre. You're not calling them up to say, hey, you know, hey, you need to. No, it's not a dictation, right? We're not we're not a dictatorship. We're going, what's going on here? Was it COVID? 
Was it something else? You know, and get them back in that rhythm. The number yeah, one. I honestly, yeah. I honestly feel like it's, I mean, even the three that I have that are actively in the business, which is not included my brother, of course, for the office, you know, Jonathan, Andy, and Jennifer. Even like those are the three I at least expected on the calls, you know, the, the the zooms, and I mean the rest of the rest of them. I I haven't. I I mean I have not talked to the other seven or eight people for months. Okay, all I'm, right, Paul, Paul, Paul. Let's just stop because we're losing the sales bent to this. Right. It's management issue. Um, it's avatar issue. We'll talk about it um offline. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Thank you. Cool. But I but I hope you all did hear hear this. Um, I, I'm telling you all right now as salespeople, nobody's coming for you. I will train the heck out of you and uh, I will coach my own team and you, these guys will coach you too. Um, you, you need to show up to be part of this. This is a game that requires a team effort, not a one-sided thing. We're not going to hand you uh, checks. It doesn't work like that. And you need to be of service. All right, let's move on. Um, it is past the half hour. So I will segue into inside sales stuff. Um, and I do know... Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. Alina, go ahead. Have, sorry, I have an open house too on Sunday. Good. So I really appreciate you talking to Jackie about that. It'll be my first one. And um, I wrote on my people, on these people here, I wrote, be a human in all caps. Yeah, right. Well, it, well, very important. And the way that you yeah. be a human. See, Elena, let me take it one step deeper. And I'm glad you spoke up. Um, here's the thing. You have context. See, as we segue into the um, inside sales calls, understand why we talk about expireds. It's a very clear context. Understand why we talk about buyer leads and those conversions, right? With Maxi and Russell especially. It's context. So an open house has context, okay? If somebody walks through the door, their context is they're interested in seeing the house as a potential buyer or interested in seeing the house as a potential seller. So you have context. So the conversation starter, you know, the 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 the, the sticks, um, you know, rubbed in the ground to get the little ember going is the market conversation. Just like Lee, who's a veteran and a pro of this, you know, was was talking about and clarifying, right? So, you know, how's it going? Yeah, market's a little bit challenging. Hey, by the way, I've got a copy of the, you know, the market report here. You can see it's challenging, right? You can pull them in. You can proactively pull them into the conversation about the market. You don't have to wait for them to ask, how's the market, right? That's your conversation starter once your business end of it is done. And the way to be human is to be of service. Let it come to you. The business, let it come to you by, by magnetizing, by being of service. That's what humanity means. Treat them like the, the, the context that they are, which is a buyer or sellers struggling to figure something out. Make sense, Elena? I think you've got yes. me. Yeah, good. Hey, Elena, same same request um, of you and Jackie. I want some anecdotes for next week, okay? Because outside sales, open houses is the number one thing I thump every week here. Get in some dang houses and have some real estate conversations. Those are the easiest ones to know you're in a real estate context versus going online and talking generally to the world versus going to the, you know, the kids soccer games or, or the, the friend meetup, whatever it might be. Those, those are further away from context than an open house. Best vehicle for all of us. So bring me some anecdotes. Okay. Yeah. Excellent. All right, Allison, weigh in on that since Elena's with you. Oh, yeah. I mean, we always, <laughs> Elena, more times than not, Chris will walk away with with uh, clients that are, not only is it an open house that's, you know, our avatar, uh, people that we love working with and, and the ideal client, but I, then we get more, and it, it just totally helps you expand and it, it, your your book of business, and it's definitely, it, it's, it's number one. I, I fully agree with Danny. It's, it's just number one. The best way. Um, we did have an anecdote, but I don't want to go over uh, since you want to go into. No, it's all right. Go ahead. No, no, it's okay. Go ahead because I'll I can zoom through the calls. It's a fast summary. Go. Um, I'll, I'll make it quick. Uh, we have a um, we have someone that we've worked with in the past that is um, listing their property um, with other realtors in the area because of the other realtors just happen to have their signs in that area, and people just happen to talk about those agents as being the agents of that area, if you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. It's that kind of scenario. But Chris has hammered so much. They have the booklet. They have talked several times. Um, 
we need to figure out what angle we're missing here. They're not using us. They see our numbers. We have sold in that area so much more now compared to the other people. I don't know why they keep falling back. And it, it's getting, it, it's wild because we're really fighting for these people. <laughs> we really want this. Um, uh, what is your experience on, you know, do you have someone that you just get hot and heavy to, you know, to really, you know, present yourself to that you really want that listing, Danny, where you, they have the booklet, um, you're talking to them, but you're getting a cold shoulder. All right, well, well like, yeah, well, I, I got it. Well, well, I got it. Um, it's been tough. Well, it's always us to see mm -hmm. because we have to overcome the situation. So right. what, what you're saying is a, is a very important anecdote for outside salespeople from a perceptive standpoint. But as you start to break in, you might be validating the misperception that you can't break in. So let's deal with this. Okay. I think it's, right. an, I think it's excellent for outside salespeople to understand this. And if for all you telemarketers are picking up the phone, trying to break in to new areas, I mean, autumn's about to go down into a whole new area that we've never really proactively gone after. I've done plenty of business in this town on the Cape, but we're going to proactively go after it where there are some people that have their feet underneath them. And, and again, it's because we have a plan, right? I mean, we're always going to start with that premise. We're not going to, we're not going to, we're not going to see the challenge and abandon what we know is really important. And we know that would serve them better than the competition. We believe that yeah. deeply. So having said that, when you go into these anecdotes right now, for me, trying to coach you, you're generalizing. Right. So so when you generalize, you're not giving me a specific anecdote to look at to say, is it me? Well, I don't know. You can't you got to walk me along one beam of light. So I see where it breaks, where like had conversations. I get that. Yeah, he's had conversations. He's presented the plan. No, no. Hold on. No, 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 no. Slow down. Okay. Slow down. It's even further okay. back. You have to go A through Z. What is the genesis of the lead. Is it a seller lead? How does it come to us in that area? You have to go seller all the way back there. Expired. Okay. So you have an expired seller lead in an area. Give me the name of the area. Old Louisville. Okay. So we have Old Louisville where we know we want to be. Have you done any business in Old Louisville? Tons. Okay. <laughs> okay. Good. So you already have resume. So that's not an issue. So I'm trying to okay. get into the mindset. That's not an Fine. issue for you. Or, or your telemarketer, either one, non-issue, because we even have resume. So now you're going, uh, you, you have the phone, uh, who called? Chris, it was a long time ago. Okay, all right, stop, stop, stop. Right Got there, it. you know the problem. Right, it, it was, yeah, it, it was, it started that way. Um, oh my gosh, I, I forgot when this was, but yeah, it, Sorry, a while back. Allison, Allison, people. Allison, yeah, Allison, stop. Don't get yourself in your emotional brain. Stay in your logical brain. If okay. Chris made the initial call, you know yes. he didn't stick to the letter of the script. Correct. You know somewhere along the line, maybe the package went out, you know, in a less than tight way, but it did go out. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes, with All right. The CMA. All right. So it, it went out how long ago? I don't have that information at this time. I don't know how okay. how far back it went because they relisted with two other agents and it's still not working. So can we do a follow up telemarketing call at this point? Because at this point, okay. they're in there again. All right, hold on. But do you see? Fire. Hold on. This is a really important head stuff thing for everybody to understand. You are Next now point. getting very logistically organized in analyzing one deal, but you made a massive blanket statement about losing in old Louisville. Do you understand you did that? Okay, and you don't have a breaking into old Louisville problem. You're talking about one person whose systematic approach was less than perfect and it's sloppy, it's non-systematic as we stretch into the longer term follow-up. So, so, so I right, well, but yeah, but the question is, what's the problem? You haven't even identified the problem. You made it some big thing. And it's not even a big thing. What is the problem? They're giving cold shoulder on follow up. Okay. So when's but hold on, where? but hold on. When's the last time you spoke to them? A week ago. Okay. And what was the conversation about? Their property. Um, I since it wasn't my call. It was Chris's call. 
All I know is that the response from him was they said, um, I know your background in Old Louisville and we'll let you know. Okay, well, why is that the cold, sh why is that the cold shoulder? Because they keep saying it every time when he does follow up after the cancel or expired with the other realtor. What is it? What does his follow up sound like? Not sure. Uh, okay. I'll see if he's recorded any yeah. calls. So you're so so there there's the problem. I'm we don't sure. know. We don't know how. Yeah. We can't even say he is or no. isn't the problem. We don't know right. how he's articulating value. Has he been out to the house? I think so. Okay. I think All right, Allison. Yes, Allison. Allison, yes. all sorts yes. of unknowns. You can't beat yourself up with that many unknowns. You have to be right. a better researcher on your own anecdotes because what you're judging is a systematic approach. That's the only mm -hmm. thing that keeps us out of an emotional state and keeps us in this logical, analytical place where we can determine what was the thing. But what's interesting is even though you yes. haven't done your own homework, you elevated it to a mega problem that you can't break into an area. Do you see how crazy that is now? Well, yeah, no, I understand that. Um, what I guess I didn't mean to indicate that. I just know that it wasn't as sequential as the way it wasn't as tight as the way we are now. Back when he started this conversation with these people. So at this point, when it's kind of scattered pre our our, our well lit path, it wasn't as well lit. So now that we're there and they're here. I'm just wondering the gentle approach at this point for something that's kind of a past scattered, like you said, an unknown. Allison is a great question. It's a reset against the system. Hey, right. you know, last time we talked, I just want to reiterate the reason for moving is this and on a scale of one to 10, you're this. Bam. Well, I just motivation, Danny. Well, just go, just go back. Just go back okay. to the system. It's the safest. Okay. You're the one that coined the term, the well lit path. So when he's yeah. on the phone, you give him a, a kick in the tail if he's not reiterating that stuff. Because she if he doesn't know, do it, it, well, well, I don't know. I don't know how far along <laughs> he is. I don't know how far along he is. Right. I don't know what he's saying. Let him determine that. I don't know we'll what he's saying. That. Look, if he's not going to the script, which I doubt he is. He I, did use it at one point. Allison, so Allison, Allison, I'm not yeah. going to guess with you. The, the more yeah. certain you can be about evidence, you, yeah. and regardless of who calls, why are they moving? Does he have it in his notes somewhere? And if not, look at I've gone through this with Autumn this week, and, and I'm trying to put it into a form. I want to know in the notes why, and on a scale of one to 10, I want to be able to look at any one of her prospects, and I want to know those just, two answers. That's it. You just had me flashed back to another conversation I just had with Chris the other day. Uh, one of the other things they kept saying is, you know, we don't have to sell it. You know, sometimes people say that to push you off the phone or they truly don't have to sell it. Yeah. We need to know. I think it's motivation, Danny. Okay. I think you just helped me out greatly. Uh, uh, again, well, thinking to the process. yeah, Allison, just go back motivation. to Yeah. Because what, here's the beauty. This is why I love this for all you outside salespeople that are, that are working or telemarketers. If you feel lost and emotional, Oh, this isn't working for me. Or, you know, I don't, you make these big, you know, emotional question marks. You just go back to the system and say, did I do it right? That's the beauty of being able to coach against the system. I'm telling you, evaluate you against a systematic approach. See, like when Paul brings it up, why aren't people, you know, showing up? Well, systematically as a manager, I have a one time a week coaching call exclusively for my agents. And the, the rules have been restressed that you will come to that with your coachable moments. And I'm going to ask you, how many prospects do you have and how much are they worth? And if you don't have any prospects, I'm going to say, well, you better double down on the campfire and my coaching. And you better come into the next week saying I had X number of conversations about real estate. If you haven't, you're just not participating. Right. Same thing with the telemarketer as you break it down. If Chris was playing the telemarketer back then, which is why I warn all the team leaders from doing it themselves, because they say, oh, I'm, I'm really good at this. Yeah, no, like, no, oh, you're not. No, you're no, you're now. not. No, right. you're you're not good at it because you have too many other things to do. So you get watered down, even if you're talented and could do it. You're not. You have too many other things. So what happens right. is in, in a systematic approach, 
you you forget to call. You forget to write your notes because you go Mark 10 with your hair on fire. So it's not about the talent on the phone and what you say. It's more so that you don't do the work. All right, let's move on. I got to go to the next thing. Yep. Thank All right. you so much. You're I welcome. That. All right. Uh, okay. So go ahead. Somebody said, Elena, go ahead. It was really quick. Um, okay. So I, I know you want to move on, but um, <laughs> so Alex saying um, on Monday we're going through with Chris for our one-hour business plan and we have to write down our threats and our opportunities. One of my threats is rejection. Yep. Like I am people pleaser and I want people to like me and I definitely like need the plan because if I don't have the plan, then I'm just like, oh my God, they don't like me. Or and what does that down. mean to you? What is that? What a, Elena, what does it mean when they don't like you? What does it mean to you? That I'm not good enough. Uh, uh, if they don't like you, you're not good enough? I mean, that's my, that's my no, no nonsense anxiety brain. That's not, it's not true, but yeah. 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 Okay. Well, well. Okay, well, hold on, hold on, Allison. Let me let me grab her. Um, Absolutely. Well, let's go back to this again. Logically, logically, um, first of all, be careful of following your high eye like me. So we like to be liked. There's no doubt about it, right? I have enough D to shut that side of myself up um, and get things done. But you have to remember, this is not about you. It's not about me. We are being of service. Yeah, you have to be of service to somebody else. So it's really not about you. And you have to take the, the the persona that we carry in there. If you're looking for that kind of love and fulfillment, the first and best bet you can do is buy a dog, right? And get unconditional love. And I'm not kidding. Like we're always looking to be filled up by somebody else. When the truth is one of the greatest ways to feel self-fulfilled is to be of service, but you must learn how to expect nothing in return. So the ultimate currency exchange is if I'm of service and I know it empowered you to, to get a little bit less stress, solve a problem, you have to be good that that makes you fulfilled even if they don't say thank you. Right. You're going to have to really, really think right. about that. You got to meditate on that like my mother used to say to me when I was out of control, right? You have to really think about that. This is not about us. When we are in the service business, the one key thing you must learn how to do is give expecting nothing in return. Now, the wonderful thing I can tell you as an old veteran of the business and a veteran coach, you will be shocked as to how many people appreciate that and in turn express likability back towards you. And if you continue it and continue to elevate the of service value, meaning you give more insight then they will become more of a natural client where the relationship is strong. And if you don't get that early on, you run the danger of not feeling liked enough and quitting and saying, I wasn't good enough, it wasn't for me. When all along, we're just never taught the simple premise that to be of service in the service business is sort of foundational. It's about them. If you sign up to become an independent contractor in real estate, you are serving buyers and sellers. And there is a ton of it that goes for free and there's no inflow. A lot of people will complain to me, well, you know, put something up on you know, social media and nobody said anything. Well, did you put it up there for yourself? For the likes, the thumbs up? Or did you actually put it out there hoping that even if somebody randomly saw it, it helped them and you didn't worry about the rest? Right now, this is a very tough concept, but if you don't understand it, there will be a lot of things in life, a lot of, you know, uh, professional experiences that, that leave you unfulfilled. So to truly learn how to be of service is a key point here. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Yeah. I know that's going to be a very tough one for you to swallow, but I, I, I can't give you a better piece of advice. You've got to learn how to give and expect nothing in return and trust that it'll bring you bucket fills, right? All right, here we go. Uh, I've got Amanda had a call. Allison, you sent me a call. Uh, Maxie and Russell, are you guys out there too? I'm here. Okay, is that you, Maxie? Yeah. Okay, all right, Russell, you there? Yep. All right, I'm going to take one from each of you first. Maxie, I've got two, Norma or Sally, pick one. Uh, we can, uh, 
Let's go for Norma. Okay. I waited her a bad call. Okay, here we go. To start at a property search website, I just wanted to let you know that you have full access now to all the search capabilities. Is that okay? Oh, yes, definitely. Great. Well, what is your timeline? Are you guys looking to buy ASAP or we just still need a few more months to get ready? What's the situation? Actually, um, we have no immediate plans to move. It's just, I was just trying to get an idea of, you know, the cost of properties up in Seattle. I mean, we're thinking maybe within a timeline, maybe within two years or so. So nothing right now, to be honest. Got it. We'd love I'm to help on the would love to I'm help sorry, when the time ahead. comes uh, for you guys. And, and by the way, Norma, why are you trying to buy a home? Well, I have some money that my parents put aside for me. Like, I mean, not a lot, but, you know, at least uh, about 20% for a down payment on a home. And it would be like a first time, I'm a, would be a, my husband and I would be first time buyers. So, you know, and it's definitely somewhere we're thinking of, you know, definitely moving permanently so definitely want to buy <laughs> okay. okay and do you currently rent yeah. or do you own your own home i mean do you currently rent this time no we do we do currently rent in los angeles we live in los angeles at the moment so oh. basically we definitely we want to get out of los angeles basically within a within two years I see, I see. Okay, well, um, enjoy scoping at the listings, Norma. Um, would love to update you, of course, with hot listings that would come directly from the source itself when the time is right for you, you know, when you, when you start to actively look. When do you think, would it make sense for us to touch base with you and see if you might be open to getting connected with an agent to help you out with the whole home buying process? Uh, plus, you know, we, you know, would love to refer you to our favorite lender too. Um, to help you check what programs you could take advantage of as a as a first time home buyer. Yeah, definitely. I mean, like uh, like I said, not now, but like we're definitely within a like a year and a half to two. I mean, we still have like certain things we want to accomplish here still. So. But it's something definitely that, you know, it's, that we're definitely planning on doing. It's just not now, okay. you know. So, but it's definitely, it's in our plan. <laughs> sure. Okay. Well, um, I'll go ahead and follow up with you, say, uh, like, uh, third or fourth quarter of next year. But if something comes up between yeah, now definitely. and then. Yeah, definitely. Right? Yeah, sure. Yeah, that would be great. Yeah, awesome. Okay. I'll also send you I'll send you a text message. I hope you say my number. If something comes up between now and then, let me know. I'd be happy to connect you with our agent and lender. Definitely. Yeah. No, of course. Absolutely. Will do. Okay. okay. Critique yourself. You you are telling me that you think this is not a good call. So tell me what you're thinking. Um, I was thinking I, I could, you know, Perhaps if there's an opportunity for me to uh, like connect them with an agent, being that she said uh, they have like twenty percent down. Um, when when they speak with an agent, at least they could have an insight of what the market is uh, this time in Seattle. So yeah, I, I I could have offered to probably check with them if they might be interested. Okay. In getting connected. All right. Here's what I here's what I hear, and I think this advice could help you. Um, you rush a lot of offers in rather than playing like a tennis match with what they say. Um, she says early on something that's near and dear to my heart right now, especially with the mastermind members I, I'm talking to them a lot about, and, and all of you, of course, solds. I just keep think, I, I keep thinking to myself, we are underestimating the power of sold properties. Okay. And she says it. She basically says it. And she gives me the proof that I so desperately need for everybody to show people that, you know, look, at the end of the day, I keep saying you guys and gals have an opportunity to, to give them some sold property information. She's trying to see what the money's buying. And you miss that opportunity here. 
So you have to see this continuum of what's happening. If I were to give away, and we just talked about it about with the outside sales agents. If I were to give a property away, okay, um, or property information away, it would be the solds in an open house. That's what I keep saying. That's the thing. When, 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 when After they've come to the open house and they got the feature sheet, that's sort of like they came into the website and they got the access, right? That's the bare minimum. I mean, there's there's no big, huge value in that. It's just the, the, the price of entry. You follow what I'm saying, Maxie? I, like, you know, the, the offer or the, the one that I stick to at Danny is um, like the offer for them to get set up. Uh, I know, Maxie, um, hang on. Maxie, I know where you're going. I know, value in it, that. Whoops, hang on one second. It's just. Hang on, the, hang, the, on the, hang on. So, Maxie, I know what you're saying. But but you, you see, here you go again in your, your brain. You're trying to rush me to an offer. I'm saying you're not hearing what she's saying. See, you're not understanding. I'm saying to you, Maxie, you have to remember where this lady came from. She was on the Internet and she decided to get access to information from your website. She would give you contact information. That's the price of entry. You understand? That's bare minimum. There's no big value in that. It's just a... A simple transaction that happens. It's like when somebody comes in and they sign in to an open house and they get the feature sheet. It's the same thing. One is physical, one is digital. Do you understand that concept? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Stop there. Stop your brain there. That has happened in both parts of the call today. Outside sales, inside sales, same transaction has happened. And it's not a lot of value. So why does the agent in the house begin to talk to them? Because they want to add value. Okay, why do you keep talking to her? You want to add value. But your brain keeps running right to the value added that that presumes she's interested now. You have a dilemma. She's a good contact. Wouldn't you agree? Yes. She has a real reason at some point. It's just not at this point. So what you're yes. doing is because you don't hear the timing to be now, you don't know how to adjust your offer. You follow me? Yeah. Because your yeah, offer would fall and you can feel it in this call. You, you're trying to adjust your offer and you can't match it up. So you're lost. You don't know what to do with her, right? Whereas what I would suggest you do is, well, look, it is important to know what the money's buying right now. So what I could do is I could get you set up in the MLS so that you can see what sells over the next year. So that comes straight from the source. You just can't get your brain out of like this routine offer. You don't even see that if she goes to the Northwest MLS to get solds and for sales, that's super valuable. And you could have done something that nobody else will do for her. And I know Duran has a disconnect on this too. Well, they can do that themselves. No, they can't. No, they can't. Because if they could, she would have done it already. You follow me? They can't set themselves up on the Northwest MLS to get sold. And that's what she said she wanted to know. What's going on? She thinks that the way to do that is to see what's for sale. But can you imagine to be able to see better than that what actually sold? I, I just can't understand why not you. I'm not picking on you, Maxie. Oh, the whole industry. I can't understand why we don't understand how valuable that would be to somebody like this lady. Right? Yep. I mean, when we give it away in houses, you can't believe how excited people get. They're like, oh my gosh, thank you so much. And they get curious and they dig in. You missed it. You can still make the offer of Northwest MLS access, but how you sell it to her has to change. Hey, I know it's a little while away, but I'd love to get you set up a Northwest MLS so that when I call you back, Maxie, You've been getting solds and you can also get updates on what's happening on the market. Now she's locked into information that is, is upsold. You got to get that down better. Otherwise, she's just a nebulous thing in your, in your um, you know, uh, database going forward. She's not, she's not getting anything from you that's interesting that everybody will give her access to for sales, but nobody will take the time to get her a market update and sales and tell her what's happening until she's ready to talk to the lender and then ready to talk to the agent. There's got to be a better understanding of how to make that offer adjustment. And hopefully you understand what I said. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, good.
good practice it try to get me a try to get me a, and you can you can call her back if you can record say you know i was thinking i should have told you i can get you all the souls if i just set you up in northwest mls and look just say i'm gonna have this person call you right you know i'm gonna have the agent yeah. call you i know it's way out early or talk to duran let's get this woman some more stuff why do we want to leave her in a bloated database right She's good, and she might shorten her time frame if you guys are showing her stuff that's sold, and she compares it to LA, and it looks like a better deal. She's got the money in hand. You follow? Yes, that's what I'm thinking too. Like, um, you know, she might have a shorter timeline if she could get those updates. Exactly. So my dilemma, my dilemma there for that call is that her timeline is, you know, over a year a couple of years she now. says that but we didn't make her any offer to see if yeah. it would shorten sometimes when we give insightful information people feel more empowered to make a decision follow yep. okay good yep, job yep good job make the adjustments get me a call where you where you feel like you've made that adjustment okay even call her back and record it okay all right, all right. here we go um uh, russell hey. you're welcome uh genie or michaela Genie. Okay, here we go. Hello. Hi, Jeannie. Yes. Hi, this is Russell with Weisbarth and Associates. I'm calling uh -huh. because I received a message here that you were looking for a good deal on Facebook for a home. Is that yep. correct? Yep. Okay. Well, or own. Or own. One or the other. Or, or, or what? Rent or own. Oh, rent or own. I see. Okay. Well, what are you looking for? Maybe we can uh, help you find it. I'm looking for a three to four bedroom, two bath house. Yes. Okay. In what areas? In Auburn, if I can, or around that area for Dway, or. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll bring Ken Federal away. So, uh, b by the way, um, yeah. uh, why, why are you looking to make a move? Oh, because um, I've retired, and I'm taking care of my grandkids, and mm -hmm. my daughter's working full-time. And we're okay. paying two different rents, so uh, we thought we'd just move in together and buy a house. And I see. Or rent a house? Mm -hmm. No. Yeah, that, that makes sense. So, on a scale of 1 to 10, how motivated are you? Oh, my daughter says more um, after the first, and we're completely 10 then. Mm -hmm. so, so you'd be for sure after 10 first, after the yeah. first. Okay, mm -hmm. but, it, but if you guys saw something that just made sense, would you would you make a move before then? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I'm just curious why the first, is that when her lease ends? Huh? Is the first when her, her current lease ends? No. Uh, she just wants to wait until after the first of the year. Um, mm. We don't have leases with our apartments right now. Ah, I see. Okay. And do you have a realtor to help you out when the time is right? No. No. Okay. Well, I, I have an idea. What if we can get you priority access to property listings from all the different real estate companies, and this would come directly from the source of information, which is the Northwest MLS? So you'll be able to get a notification the moment a property that fits your criteria hits the market, even before it shows up on any public website. There's no cost okay. and no obligation. Okay. Would, would this be helpful for you? Yes, that would be very helpful for us. We've been um, looking, because I am, as I said, retired now. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> So I'm taking care of things because I'm homeschooling them and everything. But I see. Okay. So when would be a good time to schedule a, a phone meeting with one of our agents so they'll be able to take down exactly what you're looking for? Are you more available? Sometimes morning? this weekend. This, this weekend. How yeah, does, during the week I homeschool. So. All right, Russell. I, I I like it. Rate yourself on this. Did you think this was a good call? Uh, I think so. I mean, yeah. Yeah, I did too. I mean, I, I, I'm starting to hear Russell show up, and that's what I wanted out of Maxie. Maxie started to sound like Maxie, too, but but she's still stuck on the, the exact verbiage. I thought your improvements over these weeks is that both of you are becoming human again. 
You both sound like humans. I, if, you know, it might be a subtlety. There's a couple subtleties here that I think you could tighten up. Um, in, in this case, Russell, you could lead her a, a little bit more strongly. You're very effective here. So like, you know, victory is a victory. We take them. But let's dance on, you know, the details a little bit. What if I could set you up? Why, why ask it as a question? It gives her a way out. Well, gee, given that you have such a tight time frame, what I'd like to do is just get you set up on the Northwest MLS. That's where all the stuff originates from. Get you set up there, then you'd get priority access. You could say it with more authority. Like, in other words, oh my gosh, I recognize you have a real situation. Believe me, you're going to want to get access to the Northwest MLS, which is the source, instead of running around online. And I could set both you and your, you know, we, we can. We can set up both you and your daughter so these things are coming in there because it sounds like you're busy with the kids. So you could say it more like that where you're taking the bull by the horns and saving her. Don't sound so apologetic was my reaction in my, my heart when I was listening to you. This is... This is a doable thing. That was one critique. And the other critique was in the beginning, I thought you were doing a great job. And it was a great example for Maxie to hear too, where you're being of service. Hey, I saw that you were looking at this. Was that right? And you sound very conversational, very concierge. You rush it a wee bit to ask why. So stay calm. You're in control of this. I know you could hear the kids and maybe that she was driving. So I appreciate why you rushed it a little bit, but just finish that up a little bit because you didn't ask her about price range. So I don't know anything about the price range at the moment. Okay. So, and you can hit this fast. All right. So it's three bedrooms, two baths in these areas. What price range? Okay, good. Boom. Done. Right. But just don't trip over the of service. And that's what I would say to Elena, you know, and Jackie in the open house, be of service and finish it. And if you hear an opportunity to elevate them, then go for it demonstratively, right? As a leader, say, oh my gosh, you should, and you can say it in your own tone. It's not aggressive. It's not being that person. It's, it's being a leader. You're leading them. Make sure, make sure you lead, but really good call, Russell. Good improvements for both you and Maxie. Just don't trip all over your offers. You know what I mean? You had a better job there than Maxie did because you weren't rushing to say 15 different things. You heard her context and yours was easier than hers because hers was two years out, maybe, right? Yours was January 1. So the accordion was squeezed and it's more clear, but I think you both did a better job of humanizing your tone. Good job, both of you. Yep. Good job. Uh, all right. I've got in line, Allison came first and then Amanda, and then we're going to call it. So I'll go a little OT. Okay. So. <clears throat> this is Jen. Hello, Jen. This is Melody with Egan Realty Group. Yes. The reason, I, the reason I'm calling is because I noticed your beautiful home online and I saw it didn't sell. So I wanted to send you some information that would help you sell it the next time. May I do that? Mm, beautiful. Well, actually, um, we um, we could have sold. We just didn't find a house. We had to turn down the offer because we couldn't we couldn't find a house to go to. Oh, okay. I completely understand that. Yeah. So, but you're you're welcome to send me information. Oh, absolutely. Um, would, um, can I confirm your mailing address? Uh, 1911 Crossgate Lane. Yes, ma'am. Um, that is wonderful. So I will get that sent over to you okay. at that mailing address. And um, by the way, while I have you on the phone, why didn't, um, why didn't your home sell? Well, like I said, uh, we had an offer, and it was an offer that we could have accepted, but we could not find a home to to buy, and so we had to uh, uh, turn the offer down. That's right, Jen. I apologize for that. That's okay. That's I, right. I remember you saying that in the beginning. So, um, would so on a scale of one to ten, would you be motivated to sell if 
you know, circumstances had. All right, stop. Melody, come on in here. I can see you out there. Um, come in here with me. Okay. Uh, hold on. Can everybody hear her? Kind of lost you there. Melody, try again. Yeah, it's a little bit. Uh, I don't know what happened to my speaker. My speaker just crapped out here. Um, all right, well, let me give the critique anyway. Melody, um, I can tell what's happening here. You're not athletically ready for this call. This is what I what I say to everybody. What, tell me a little bit about when you were making these calls, what did it look like? Well, like where were you sitting? Tell me a little bit about the, you know, the, the setup. Okay, why, why did you feel like you got so lost? Um, because when I was trying to get back to the script, I wanted to be, you know, like, empathetic in that moment, and I was trying to get back to the script and get to the second beat, and I had realized that I had repeated myself within that moment. And, and then you froze up. Okay. All right. Look, this is an easy adjustment. You need to read the script. Okay. Yeah. You need to read it, print it out in big, big stuff and just have it right there. And you can almost keep your finger on it as you're going down. You're, you're, you're trying to trying to do so many things instead of just learning your training. You have a beautiful tone, by the way. It was like, take me to your leader in the beginning. Right? Like I, I mean, it, it, I even I even posted a comment in the public forum for YouTube. Beautiful tone, Melody, is what I wrote. Your tone is spectacular. So, like you, you, the self confidence that will come with practice will be a natural for you. But let go of the steering wheel, dear. You're driving and your knuckles are white and there's no breath coming into your body. Like there's nothing going to go wrong here. You follow me? Right. Like so so. I, I wouldn't be so uh, like white knuckled on this thing. You can't do anything wrong. How about that? Exactly. Okay. You're not going to do anything wrong. So okay. you, you're very hard on yourself trying to be perfect, and that's never going to happen. So let it go and, and, and evolve a, a more natural way. I mean, this lady is a really good lead. You're going to find out that this lady is a really good lead because – it's a very typical problem. We could have sold it, but we didn't have anywhere to go. Well, why didn't you have anybody anywhere to go? Did somebody give you a buyer plan? What happened there? We can solve that, okay? Now, experientially, that will come to you, but that's what we find a lot of these, and they're actually easy to solve. So did this? how did this end? Did the package go out the door? Okay. All right. Good. Good. You sound a little depressed. You okay? Got it. Yeah, got it. All right. Well, I just want to make sure you're not down on yourself because, man, are you good? You just don't know this. And I'm going to tell you, you must be athletically ready, right? You, athletically ready means your script is in front of you. The market update is in front of you. Okay. The seller plan infographic, the buyer plan. You must be athletically ready, visual. Your phone is here. Your laptop is here with MLS. Allison, you need to sit her down and set her up her workspace over Zoom. Okay. That's right. Cool. No problem at all. Yep. Good. Thanks, all right. Baby. All right, guys. I think I've got room for one, one more call. One more call. You're welcome, Melody. I hope you feel better too. It's not easy um, doing this when you don't feel good. All right, Amanda, we're going to close the show with you. Here we go. Hello. Hi, this is Amanda from Rosetti Realty. And I was calling because I saw your beautiful home online and it appears that it didn't sell. So I wanted to mail you a package of information that includes a seller's strategic plan that will help you sell it the next time. I wanted to confirm the best mailing address for that. 
This is Amanda from Rosetti Realty. I work with Gail. She wrote a seller strategic plan that works every time. And I just wanted to make sure that we got too much there to you because it appears that your home didn't sell. And I just wanted to make mm -hmm. Let me talk. Do you hang up? Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. Yeah. All right. Well, 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 just look at, look at, look at, look at, yeah. Stop. This is going to be an easy one. Stop. You talk to Gail on these and say, should we send him the package and then try to follow up? Otherwise guy keeps falling, you know, hanging up on you. Okay. We don't need to chase these guys unless Gail makes a business decision to do so. But also don't let this guy rattle you or guys like this rattle you. This is the high D that you're all always training for. And I'm going to let you off the hook. He's a jerk. So you're going to do your best, but you're not going to sit there stumbling and fumbling over yourself, right? Just, just, you're just going to say, look, it's, it's Amanda. And you got a little bit like defensive of the bride. Well, she wrote a, you know, she wrote this thing and it works every time. Oh, that was ugly language. Oh, it was ugly. It was salesy. I, I, you know, that's the kind of thing you want to take a shower after somebody says it to us on the phone, right? It's, that's ugly language. That's salesy. And that's why you get clicked on. And the reason you did it is because you're panicking. You're trying to do too much. Like I'm just saying to Mel, you don't, you don't need to do too much. This is who I am. Who is this? It's Amanda. And just re re reiterate it quickly. It's Amanda. I want to send you some properties that sold around you in the market. And I just want to make sure I have the right address. Stop talking about the plan. That's lost on people. That's what they need. What they want is the insightful information. I'm going to keep pounding that on these calls. Start with the souls. For the inside sales. For the outside sales, start with the sold. Solds are insightful pieces of information. Got it? Yeah. Good job. All right. All right, everybody. Listen, that's enough. We went OT today. Good job. I like the balance between outside sales and inside sales. You have to practically apply this stuff in the field or we have no coachable moments like this. So all of you that did bring me coachable moments, bravo. To the rest of you, I will be bringing an electric cattle prod. I know your names. And I will send a shockwave through the Zoom at your name. And I will get you up off your seat. Like Paul Cantu says, what are you doing waiting for us to come and drag you? Donnie, you look really hot against that green screen. I just have to say that. I don't know what it is. You're in LA. You, I hope you're filming something because you look good. <laughs> you're muted though. We got to hear you. We, I, you look good there, baby. Go for it. All right, everybody. See, see you later. Good job. Please practice this this weekend. Bring me some coachable moments next week. See you on the other side. Thank you.